Hey friends and students, my name is Chris and I teach the only online ESL course for politics, history, economics, and related subjects. If you're an intermediate or advanced English student, especially one who's interested in the subjects I talk about on this channel, and you'd like to learn more about the courses I teach, send me an email at the address in the description and ask any questions you like. Today we're talking about democracy and dictatorship. It's the topic of one of the English courses that you can take with me. I've talked a bit about democracy already on this channel in my videos on the state, government versus governance, and the social contract, so you might want to watch those too or maybe even watch them before, but you don't need to. And this is an important topic, so I wanted to talk more about it. The word democracy comes from the Greek demos, which means people, and kratia, which means rule or government, something like that. Sometimes democracy is summarized as of the people, so like people taken from the people, <laughs> by the people, and for the people. Democracy is seen as the ideal, the best possible uh, way of running society, the standard that all governments should live up to. But do governments really live up to it? Is it even possible? In the so-called Western democracies, like Canada, the US, France, and so on, we're always being told that the world is divided into democracies, like us, the good guys, and dictatorships. A dictator, or autocrat, is really just one person who's in charge of the government. That's all it really means. So we think of a dictatorship as a country where there's very little freedom. The problem is, when we divide the world up so simply, we're just not going to see the forest for the trees. In other words, we'll miss the big picture. Being warned about dictatorships in other countries was a good way for us in the democracies to uh, think that we must have it the best. You know, it, it's the best to live in a democracy. And, and, you know, compared to dictatorships, we probably were quite lucky. But should that stop us from questioning and criticizing and improving on this democracy? Well, it did have that effect, but we should question everything. All governments are run by a minority in society. Only a few people can make up or comprise a government, just like only one person can be the captain of the football team. Eleven people comprise the team, but only one person can be the captain. But the difference between teams and the government or the state is a government is something we're forced to obey. While you can join and leave a football team, whenever you want. A football team will not force you to pay for all of its activities, like governments force us to pay in taxes. A football captain will not force you to follow every one of his rules and then send the police to beat you up if you don't. A football team will not make you fight a war for it. Democracy or dictatorship all governments use force to make you obey. 
we're told that democratic governments represent the people. But how? How can they represent me when they've never asked me what I want? Has the government ever asked you what you want? If they asked you, what would you say? Have they ever done any of those things? We hear the word uh, accountable a lot when we're talking about government and democracy and elections. An election or a vote is supposed to make government accountable. The government needs to be accountable to the people. And it's assumed that in a democracy, government is accountable to the people, whereas in a dictatorship, it isn't. But even democratic governments are not accountable. And elections don't change that. Why not? Well, for one thing, government is not just politicians. We don't get to choose who carries out their decisions. We don't get to choose the police. We don't get to choose anyone in government, except a few people at the top who may or may not have the power to do anything. For another thing, even in places where there are elections every few years, politicians don't do what all the people want. They can't. We all have different interests. Instead, they just do what rich people want. Rich people pay them. They pass laws that benefit those rich people. It's like that in every country. Furthermore, we're told in democracies we're free, and in dictatorships people aren't free. But freedom's not just a simple dichotomy. You're not either free or unfree. I think you could say freedom, at least the way I see it, is more of a spectrum, you know, a line where, where you could be on any one of those points on the line. We're told all the freedoms we have, like freedom of speech, that's always the first one people talk about, but we're not that free to speak in democracies. People often get arrested for speaking in public. In the U.S. recently, for example, people have been arrested and attacked for protesting the horrible practices of the border police. I'll put a couple of articles in the description if, if you want to read about it. It happens a lot. I was always told that kind of thing only happened in dictatorships. Well, then I guess democracy isn't that different from dictatorship. All right, let's review the vocabulary. So, we talked about the ideal. Democracy is seen as the ideal, the best possible way of doing anything. It's a standard that they have to live up to, to be at a certain standard, to live up to this standard. A dictator or an autocrat is basically when one person, of course it, it never really works like that, but, but uh, one person or one very small group is in charge of everything and you have to do what they say or they throw you in jail or kill you. The expression to not see the forest for the trees means to not see what's really going on, the big picture. The idea behind this expression is that you can't see the forest because there are trees in the way. So you can't see the big thing because of little details that are blocking your sight, basically. We learned the word comprise. Um, so you could say that, again, uh, 11 people comprise a football team. Um, 
and uh, you could say my, I don't know, my sales team at work comprises five people. It's a very formal word. You don't need to use it all the time. <laughs> the word obey. Do what you're told. Obey. <laughs> you know, we think of that with the law. You obey the law. Or you don't have to. <laughs> you could also disobey. To represent uh, one of those words we hear a lot when talking about democracy or any government. Uh, government is, we're, we're told, government is supposed to represent people, to work for those people. Well, if you've seen other videos of mine, you probably know that's not really true. <laughs> to impose, uh, to impose something on someone is the same as to force something on someone, to, to force someone to do something, to impose on them. Um, sometimes we even use this word uh, when trying to be polite. Um, can, I, can I stay with you for a night or two? I don't want to impose. You know, I don't want to be too much for you. Uh, accountable, also, we hear a lot in discussion on democracy. Accountable just means responsible. You could say, uh, again, government is supposed to be accountable to the people, but really, it isn't supposed to be. That's just something they tell us. I use the word furthermore. Furthermore is a great way uh, to sound smart by just using a word like also. It's your, your next point, you know, point A is like this. Furthermore, my next point, that's how you use it. I use the word dichotomy. Dichotomy is when there's only two choices. You, only, you can do either this or this. But a lot of what we call a dichotomy is actually just a false dichotomy. Like in this case, you're either free or you're not free. Well maybe you could be something else. Maybe you're somewhere else uh, on, rather than uh, just being part of that dichotomy, those two choices, maybe there's a whole spectrum, a long line with an, an infinite number of possible points that you could be on this line. Anywhere between, in this case, extremely free to locked in jail, where there are people watching everything you do. That's what a spectrum is. There you go. I don't really like any government because I don't like forcing everyone to follow thousands of laws and threatening them with violence if they don't. I would rather we were all free to do what we wanted without worrying the police will punish us. Not many people in the world have that kind of freedom, but we could make it happen. Thanks everyone. Please remember to hit like on this video and subscribe to my channel. See you all next week.